Hey guys, my name is Sharon and today we're going to solve a coding interview question called uh, Most stones we move with same row or column. You can find it on leak code. Its number is uh, 947 and it's labeled as a medium difficulty. Okay, so let's get straight into the problem. Now the input for this problem is uh, an array of two degree points, each representing a position of a stone on a board. Now a move is defined by the removal of a stone that shares a column or a row with another stone on the board. So we are asked to return the maximum number of moves we can possibly make. Okay, so let's get into the examples. The input for the first example is an array of six points, each representing a stone. And the correct output for this input is five. So why is the correct output five? Now let's start by drawing the grid. It's always easier when you can visualize the problem. So we have this grid over here and we uh, place the stones on it. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 2, 2. If we look at this stone here, the only way we can remove it is if we have another stone either on its column or on its row. And we can see here that there is another stone on its row and also on its column, so we can remove it. Now let's also keep a counter that keeps track of how many moves we made. Now, so far we removed one stone, so we've made one move. Okay, now let's look at this stone here. Again, the only way we are able to remove it is if we have another stone either on its column or on its row. In this case, we have another stone on its row, so uh, we can remove it and we can increase our counter to two moves. Now let's look at this stone. We can remove it because there is another stone on its column. Okay, so we remove it and we increase our counter. Now uh, let's look at this stone. Again, there is another stone on its uh, column, so we are able to remove it and we do. We increase our counter and now we look at this stone. There is another uh, stone on its row, so we can remove it and increase our counter. Now we look at this last stone. It's alone on the board. Obviously, it doesn't share a row or a column with any other stone, uh, so we are not able to remove it. Okay, so this is our answer, uh, which is the correct answer. Now, the next thing we need to do is make some generalizations. We need to uh, generate some insights that will help us solve other problems, not just this one. We need to look at the stones as nodes in an undirected graph. In this graph, there is an edge between two stones, if and only if, uh, they share a row or a column. So we have an edge here because they, they share a row, here because they share a column, row, column, row, column. Okay, so this is our graph. Let's get rid of the grid so it's more clear. So obviously uh, what we have here is a graph that is made out of a single connected component because you can reach any node from any other node, right? Uh, because it's a connected component, we can talk about a spanning tree and this is one uh, option for a spanning tree for this graph. Now we are able to remove its leaves and now we have a spanning tree for this subgraph and we can remove its leaves and we can keep doing that and then we are left with just one node. So that is our first key insight for this problem is that in a connected component we can always remove all of the stones except one. Now let's move on to the second example. In this case, we get a list of uh, five points. Let's uh, put these stones on the grid. So we have 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 0, 2, uh, 2, 0, and 2, 2. And now let's look at the graph for this example. So obviously, in this case, we don't have a single connected component. We have two because the uh, middle stone, it doesn't share a row or a column with any other stone. So that makes it its own connected component. Now, the next thing that we need to notice here is that it doesn't matter how I choose to remove stones in this larger component, uh, it's not going to affect the smaller component here, right? So this is the second key insight for this problem, that moves in one component do not affect any of the other components. Now, what would happen if I choose to add another stone here? Now, this new stone, it shares a row with the uh, green component and it shares a column with the orange component, right? So does that mean that this new stone belongs to two different components? Well, no, because by definition, once I've added this stone, uh, these two components become one larger component because now you are able to reach any of the stones from any of the other stones. And that brings us to the uh, third uh, key insight for this problem is that each stone belongs to exactly one component.
So now that we have our three insights, we are able to get to a formula for the number that we want. Because we know that moves in one component do not affect any of the other components, we can say that the total number of moves on a given set of stones is exactly the sum of the moves that we can make in each component. And we know that in a connected component, we can always remove all of the stones except one. So we can say that the number of moves in each component is the size of the component minus one. Now, if we leave this formula as is, we would have to find the size of each connected component. But there's actually an easier way. We can rearrange the formula a little and get to this formula here. Now, because we know that each stone belongs to exactly one component, we can say that the sum of the sizes of the components is actually just the total number of stones on the board. And we already have this number. It comes with the input. So the only number that is left for us to find is the number of connected components. Okay, so now that we know exactly what we're looking for, uh, we can start thinking about implementation. What is the data structure that we're gonna use and what is the algorithm? So because we're talking about this joint set, the most natural data structure that we should think of is UnionFind. UnionFind is a data structure that allows us to very quickly unify groups together and very quickly find which group contains a certain element. These two operations take a uh, worst case O of log n, but if you look at the amortized time complexity, it's actually a very small constant. The next thing we need to think about is what is the algorithm? How are we going to group the stones together? So the most naive way to do that would be to start with each stone being its own uh, group and then iterating over each pair of stones and if the stones share a row or a column we unify their groups together. Now that will work uh, just fine but uh, the time complexity would be uh, worst case O of n uh, squared log n because iterating over each pair of stones would be O of n squared. There is actually a better way of doing that uh, but it's a bit tricky so uh, let's do that step by step. So we're going to do that with the second example. Uh, this is the uh, grid for that example. Now instead of starting with each stone being its own group, we're going to start with each row that contains a stone and each column that contains a stone being their own group. So what do you mean by that? This row contains a stone, so it's going to be its own group. This column contains a stone, so it's going to be our next group. This column also contains a stone, that's our next group. This row is the next group. This column would be our fifth group. And the last group would be this uh, row here that, that has two stones in it. Now what we're going to do is follow this algorithm. We're going to iterate over each stone and for each stone we will unify the group that contains its row with the group that contains its column. So for this stone we will have to unify the group that contains row zero with the group that contains column zero. So group one contains row zero and group two contains column zero. So we will unify group one with group two. For this next stone, we will need to unify the group that contains row zero with the group that contains column two. So that will be group one because it contains row zero and group three that contains column two. For this next stone, we will need to unify the group that contains row one with the group that contains column one. So group four and group five. Next stone, group that contains row two and group that contains column zero. So group six and group one. For the last stone, we need to unify the group that contains row two with the group that contains column two. And in this case, both of these are already on the same group. They're, both of them are in group one, so we don't need to do anything. So we're left with two groups for this example, uh, which is exactly the number of connected components. So for this example, the correct answer is the number of stones, which is five, uh, minus the number of connected components, which is two, and that's how we get three. So now that we have our full algorithm in place, we can start coding the solution. So we're going to start by implementing the uh, union find data structure. I'm not going to uh, go into great detail about how union find is actually implemented. If you're interested, you can find more details in this link uh, from uh, Geeks for Geeks. I'm gonna put that in the description box. It explains exactly how it works and what are the optimizations that we do uh, in order to reach the performance of uh, O of log n and uh, amortized small constant. Okay, uh, so let's start by adding this uh, data structure. Because we want to start with each row and each column being their own groups, uh, we need a way to discern the uh, columns from the rows. So if we have uh, row zero and column zero, this, these are not the same numbers. So what I decided to do is just to 
um, treat the rows as negative numbers and the columns as uh, positive numbers. And because we do that, we need to avoid the number zero because that's going to be the same for positive and negatives. So uh, the way we do that is we just say that the row is negative, the actual row plus one. The plus one was, uh, again, uh, so we avoid the zero. And the column is just uh, the original column. Uh, this is the column, plus one. And now we want to uh, initialize the parent array, uh, that the parent of the row is row, and the parent of call is call. And the last thing we want to do is to initialize count. And count is going to be the number of the number of groups. Now the, the find function and the union functions uh, are just the normal implementation, so I'm just going to speed through that. So let's get into the uh, main function. Create a union find class instance. I call it UF. Now again, I want to iterate over the uh, stones. So for each stone in stones, I want to, so I, actually let's copy it from here. Now we want to unify um, group that contains its row and the group that with the group that contains its column. Okay, so that is basically it. The, the last thing that we want to do is uh, return the uh, number of stones, which is this, minus the number of connected components which is this. Okay, so let's try it. There is a compilation error, so... Um, yeah, I always misspell that. Unordered. Union find no matching constructor. Of course, we have to give this guy the stones array. And now it's accepted, so let's submit that. So that's a success, and that is the end of this video. So uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.